How's it going guys? Ow. How's it going guys? Aaron here and it has just turned midnight and I'm in my room in a house that has no one else in it but me. The hallways are dark. What, what better thing to talk about than horror movies? <laughs> so yes, basically I've had this huge interest in horror movies recently. It's been since the past two years, give or take. I'm not sure how long it's been, but it's been recent. And I've been watching so many horror movies, researching things, because I want to get into making my own horror movies myself. So basically, I'm just going to say what makes a good horror movie. There are a lot of uh, formats out there that try to copy other formats in horror movies, but a lot of the time it doesn't work. Um, it becomes a failure, just like a lot of the horror movies on Netflix. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of them on there are actually really bad. Okay, so what makes a good horror movie? Suspense, atmosphere, and, and scares. Obviously scares. Atmosphere is probably the most important thing though. If you enter into watching a movie and straight away you basically feel uneasy, and kind of not exactly comfortable. That's the start of actually a good, decent horror movie. They're doing their job just right. A lot of horror movies don't don't do that. One of the horror movies that I think is amazing is The Babadook. It's an Australian film. It's got an amazing cast. The the atmosphere is insane. I was watching it with my friend Robbie, and basically we were squirming in our seats. Certain camera shots which were just disturbing. It's amazing what you can do with just a shot of a hallway. Things like that make a great horror movie. It's not necessarily just blood and gore. I mean, there are sub-genres within horror movies. You've got, you've got your supernatural horror movies, you've got your slasher flicks, you've got your monster movies. There, there are so many to count and then there are genres within the genres, you know, you've got so many. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start. Basically, a good horror movie always does the unexpected. That usually means to try and do as less amount of cliches as possible. I mean, cliches, it depends on what you really want out of a horror movie. Some people love horror movie cliches like a classic horror film, you know, like the the black man or the Asian guy dies first, the virgin survives, or the, the bad guy's not really dead by the end of the film, he comes back. Things like that, it, it's so predictable, and I love to watch a horror movie which surprises me. And, and I'm not talking just jump scares, I'm talking actually, legitimately makes me go, whoa, hold up, I did not I did not, I did not expect that. Shit. It's, it's more fun. Horror movies are more fun when they catch you off guard. You know, what's better than catching someone off guard? You know, it, it's, it's not even fun at all when someone's like, oh, here we go. There's a jump scare and it happens. You know, things like that. It's just, eh. And there is really only one reason to watch horror. And that is to get scared. You know, if you're not scared, then it's not a horror movie. It's probably some romantic comedy, for all you know. A horror movie that's not scary literally just becomes an action, a violent action film, basically. Okay, one extra thing I've got to say about horror movies is, if possible, unless it's done right, try and stay away from found footage films. I have watched so many bad found footage films, it is not even funny. Found footage films are so flawed alliteration. Found footage films are pretty much, there are so many things that if you watch it, you'll notice very obvious, again, cliches arrive in these so much. Someone's got a camera and basically they want to film everything that they see. 
no excuses, nothing. One of the worst found footage films I've ever seen is actually, amazingly enough, a George Romero film called Diary of the Dead. It, the acting is terrible, a lot of situations that happen, you wouldn't see that happen. It basically, someone, someone shoots themselves because they're, they're annoyed, they, they can't stand being in this zombie infested world, they're like, what is going on? So they shoot themselves. And legitimately, I shit you not, this is the people's reactions. Oh, is she okay? You alright? Oh, crap, she shot herself. Okay. I had so much respect for George Romero until I saw that film. George Romero has made so many good films. And then he, like, the original Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, so good films. And then he goes and shits out this piece of crap. What happened, man? Used to be cool. Okay, so some, some good examples of found footage films is The Blair Witch Project, The Taking of Deborah Logan, and Taking of Deborah Logan, I suggest people see that. If you haven't seen it, watch it now. It has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and far out, that's a found footage film done right. A another one is The Possession of Michael King. I completely forgot it was a found footage film because it was that good. It, it, the atmosphere was great. He had a reason to be filming. Basically, it's a story about a guy who's a skeptic. He doesn't believe in the supernatural demons, God, or anything like that. So what he does is basically goes out and tries to find real evidence of the supernatural by doing rituals and things like that, but then turns out that this demon starts to possess him. So basically, he gets himself in this whole mess, and it's just done so well. And I think it shits so much on on Paranormal Activity. What? You actually liked Paranormal Activity? Fuck off. So, basically, that's, that's basically all I've got for you guys tonight, and... Shit. Sorry, I just got really creepy in here, because kind of in a house all alone, with, um, hearing noises, and it ain't fun. So basically, this this will be it, and uh... Hold on, I'll just... I'll be back in a second. I'm I'm sorry. I had to. It. Aaron Beck over and out. <laughs>